Okay, so I like your forehand, but I think on the back end you can improve several things. And the one thing that I noticed is when you when you set up, see, so look, I'm gonna just pretend I'm hitting this way. So when you set up, number one, you you're you're very narrow in your stance. And therefore the shoulders are not turned enough so your right shoulder is positioned towards the ball and what happens as a result of that is when you then drop the racket the racket is pointed parallel towards the side fence like this when you watch high-level players you see two things that are different they will often make a lateral step like this so it will step across the body and then naturally what happens is their shoulder blade is turned towards the ball so they have a much bigger turn than you do and then what happens as a result of this uh, big turn is that when the racket drops it drops parallel to the back fence like this see the way you have to look at this is you're not going to like consciously mechanically put the racket this way it's just a result of making a bigger turn okay. so by making a bigger turn you get two things you get more rotation into the contact and that gives you a lot of power and also you increase uh, the swing radius. So you get a little bit more range of motion so you can get more power that way. But I remember you were saying something about the open stance backhand. Are you, are you trying to hit a lot of open stance backhands or? Oh, only when I uh, get pulled out wide. That's fine, I, that's I, fine, I, I take that's fine. Left. So I don't know when to load on the left leg or when to. Okay. I don't yeah, know don't really worry about step. loading on the left leg. What you need to worry about is making a turn. Turn, okay? okay and yes yeah, sometimes you will you will do open stance backhands especially on the run or in a return to serve usually when there's not a lot of time uh, you can hit it off your non-dominant leg what I want you to do on the vast majority of your backhands is really work on the lateral step, lateral step and okay. and also that that large turn where if you had a number on your back you should be able to show that number to your opponent that's how much you have to turn so if I'm hitting this way look if I had a number on my back my opponent should be able to see that number. That's how large the turn have to be. What's the lateral step you were talking about? A lateral step, basically, it's, it's very natural if the ball is coming to the side. So if, my, if the ball is coming to my backhand side, I naturally will step across like this and I get a lateral step. So when I make that lateral step to the side, to the side. naturally you get a bigger shoulder turn. But the problem is that what do you do when the ball is coming through the middle? Then it's kind of awkward to go like this. So what you got to do is you have to, you can you can step backwards with your non-dominant leg and get in that same position. So instead of playing the ball like this, they kind of narrow and the feet parallel to each other. You step back with that back foot and you end up in that same position. So you, you always have to you have to force that turn a little bit more from the middle, okay. whereas it comes more natural uh, when you're pulled out wide. So if the ball's coming in the middle, you're saying instead of me like kind of adjusting like this. Yeah. You're saying take my left? Exactly. Kind of yeah, it's up. kind of awkward to, to step out of the way and then step this way. This That's is what I do. this doesn't make a lot of sense. So you just yeah. if the ball's coming through the middle, you just go like this. You just pull back with this leg right here and then reach that same position. Uh, so let me feed you a few and you try to make that big turn with a lateral step. So I step with the right leg? Step with the right leg, but make sure the, the leg is going towards the side. That's why I call it the lateral step, okay? And it can be even diagonal. Or you can be in some instances forward, but you always want to end up in that same position. So look, this would be completely lateral, this would be diagonal, and this would be forward, but I'm always making that large turn. So I can go here. Right. I can go here. There. And I can go here. And in each instance, you get that humongous shoulder turn that is going to result and so many benefits for your backhand, okay? Okay, and another thing you said too is I need a wider base. I'm too narrow with my Absolutely, hand. you want to have a wide base because what happens with a narrow base is that when you accelerate really fast and you're narrow, uh, you're, gonna, you're, going to be, you're going to lose balance as a result of that. So when you accelerate from a narrow position like this, you're going to be falling That's out of the shot. That's what I do all the time. Yeah, you're going to be falling out of the shot super quick where if you have a, have a strong foundation, you're like a tree, like nobody can push you. So yeah. go ahead and and stand narrow. Here, go ahead and stand. Okay, narrow is like stand in front of me. Stand in front of me. I'll show you. Just okay. go this way. Okay. All right. Stand narrow. Okay. A little bit more narrow. So I'm going to push you. You see, you can fall quite easily. And I go super wide. Yeah. And I see you like you're like more solid. I can't really push you around that much. Yeah, so I need to wide the base with that lateral 
lateral yes, always a, the, as wide as possible. If you see Federer, man, sometimes he takes this humongous step on the back and he goes like this, especially if he's on the run. Okay. And it's going to allow you to swing really fast and maintain your balance. Now lateral step, beautiful. Good. Wow. Okay. One thing you got to keep in mind on the back end also is that there's going to be a lot of lifting, right? Because you want to accommodate the swing pad, which is vertical. Okay. So I don't want you staying low unless you get a low ball, all right? So if you get a low back end and you're going like this, it's fine to stay low. But if it's waist height or above, I want you to raise up. Rise up. And I want you to load the body by not only turning, but also going down a little bit with the torso. This picture of Avrinka or Federer, when they're loading, this front shoulder is always down, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's a little bit down and there's like a V formation between uh, the front leg and the torso and then when they get closer to contact they start raising that front leg and start straightening the torso so they get a lot of lifting momentum too they got vertical momentum on the back end so you start here and then you lift like this and this is going to help the racket go up faster dip dip beautiful dip Beautiful. And lastly, there's one more thing that you want to pay attention to, and that is what your left hand is doing. Okay. And I, I want to explain this to you so it makes sense. So what happens to the vast majority of one-handed backhands is that when they accelerate forward towards the ball, the non-dominant hand actually comes with the racket. And it usually comes uh, to about right here, about the middle of the body. Now there's some that actually keep going a little bit more forward and there's some that stop right here with the non-dominant arm. Okay. And yours is doing that. Now what I don't want you to do is to remain here uh, once you make contact. I want this hand to at least go this way or actually go in the opposite direction where you're squeezing your shoulder blades together. On the finish? On the finish. So this has to do a little bit with what happens on your finish. So there's two types of backhands. There's a backhand that um, continues to rotate after contact. This is a la Vavrinka, Shapovalov, Dominic Thiem. So they hit the backhand like this, look. They hit it here and then they continue to rotate with, with the torso like this. And then there's others like Federer that will rotate into the contact and then hold the rotation right here. Okay. So you have, open. you have more of an open backhand, right? Okay. Which is great for power. You get definitely more power that way. Uh, so in this case, it doesn't make a lot of sense for that non-dominant arm to go here. This will feel awkward and will inhibit your rotation. Okay. So what I want you to do is that non-dominant arm is going to come with here and then once you start finishing, kind of stretch it this way, like this. this. You see? This kind of reminds you of a brinka, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks exactly like that. Right? So you're going to go here, look. You're going to go here and then the, the arm is going to go more on this side of the body. So don't try to squeeze the shoulder blades so much. So this is an exception where normally I would say squeeze the shoulder blade if you have a backhand like Federer squeeze them uh -huh. but in your case because you have so much torso rotation doesn't make any sense to squeeze but make sure you bring the arm up a little bit so you can balance your body a little better like this look so pretend like you're finishing so you're gonna go here you're gonna finish here with torso rotation and this arm is gonna go here like that you oh, see you're like perfectly Ravrinka. balanced like Ravrinka, like Ravrinka. Yeah, yeah. but if you were sideways on the finish then you would actually go this way a little more does that make sense if I was sideways I'd go which way more he would go more behind you with the non-dominant arm like this he would squeeze the shoulder blades like oh. that yeah because sometimes you will be sideways on the back end you know you not, not, don't always have time to rotate yeah like Ravrinka he doesn't always like sometimes he, stays close, right? he sometimes will stay close let's say he's getting like a pickup backhand off the ground or or he's blocking a backhand or he's doing a backhand return, he will not always rotate, you know? I'm Just like Federer will not always stay sideways, he will open up sometimes too. I wonder why on these I felt the need to open up. It's fine to open up. There's no problem with that. Maybe because I was trying to go cross court? Yeah, but it's possible. But what I need to remember is that you use that non-dominant arm to balance your body out. Don't let the left arm hang down here, or even worse, don't allow it to come with the racket. 
Yeah. This is going to hurt your stroke, so okay? Let it go back a little bit. Let it go back a little bit. Again. Another one. All right, Samir, so you got a really nice back end, but it's going to be even nicer if you do the following things. So I'm going to summarize what we did today. So the most important thing and the fundamental thing that was missing on your back end was your setup, your preparation. You didn't have a large enough turn. In the beginning, when I saw you hitting back ends, it was mostly like this. You see? Uh, no turn whatsoever. Right? So now in this back end, it's mostly an arm action. Now you did rotate on this back end, but it's a lot more arm dependent then the back end where you set up with your shoulder blade towards the ball. See, now you're going to rotate into the contact and there's a big difference uh, compared to the way you used to hit it. So what can help you get this turn is making a nice wide base with either a lateral step or diagonal step or a forward step. And this wide step will give you a better foundation so you don't lose your balance as you accelerate your back end really fast. And also what you want to look at is dipping that front shoulder, which will give you also vertical momentum. So you're going to go up and you're going to rotate simultaneously and it's going to help the swing path which is uh, up and across like this so basically you set it up with this dip type of position and then as you come towards the ball you simply straighten the leg and straighten the torso and then you remember to finish the right way by using the non-dominant arm and not letting it sit here as you finish it because this is going to put your back end off balance and you basically have the non-dominant arm going the opposite direction which in your case because you have a torso rotation after contact your left arm is going to go out in this direction and so as soon as you feeling the racket going around here as you're regaining consciousness of the stroke this is where you initiate the non-dominant arm and raise it up into the air like that so if you do all those things i think your back end can be a lot better it's already good but it's going to be even better <laughs> one day at a time all right <laughs> thank you